One of these 14 mastering tricks is going to be crowned the king of making loud masters. A couple of them will hit the A tier and the rest, well, it's a mixed bag because I've set up a door session to put your loudness tricks under a microscope and rank each one. So don't forget to like the video and smash the subscribe button because by the end of this video, you're going to be jumping into your own session to try a few of these out. The first one for the tier list is compression and just general downward compression. It's definitely not God tier pro level or going to get you good results making things loud. It's a be careful, all right? It's your C grade, be careful. It is a useful tool to help get loud masters, but it isn't the tool that's going to make your master super loud. It is be careful because over compression can kill the mix. And here is me implementing it um, to a tasteful amount. Okay, so a tasteful amount of compression and the difference of it before and after. Take a listen. So rhythmically, it can really help the movement of a mix, but overall loudness, it isn't something I'm going to rate super highly. So the next one is EQ and tonal balance. I'm going to put this as a necessity for good results. This isn't going to get you the super loudest master, but you do need good tonal balance for any decent, competitive, good sounding master. And it's going to sit here. And the reason why it doesn't get pro level or god tier is because there's other techniques you can use which don't affect the overall balance of a mix as much. This is about balancing what's there. So if a mix is slightly dull, making a brighter is a good move, but sometimes a mix already is well balanced and it doesn't need that additional EQ. So it's not something you can always reach for if you're trying to make a master loud. Now it sits in good results and here's a before and after of EQ off and then on. And what I've chosen to do is use one stage of the K weighting filter for the LUFs and basically a four decibel shelf from one kilohertz and up. It is quite excessive, but level matched, you can hear the difference in loudness between this mix is overall a little bit dull coming in. So a dull mix and a mix that has been brightened up because it needed to be brighter. Have a listen to this before and after. The next one is a limiter, and I'm going to put this alongside EQ and tonal balance in good results. You can get really good results if you use a limiter conservatively to get a loud master. It's after it gets conservative that you start to hear pumping, and, and, and that isn't good. So a limiter is a good tool to get good results when you're trying to get a loud master. It's not going to get you the loudest masters. It's not going to get you God tier loud masters, but it's definitely going to help you out. What we're actually going to do is before we listen to the limiter, before and after, what we're going to do is we're going to rank clipping because I think clipping is pro tier. Clipping is so limiters set a ceiling, clippers clip a ceiling for dynamic music or things with punch. Clippers is pro level because you're not necessarily changing the tonal composition of everything underneath those peaks, you're just clipping them, giving a bit of sap, like giving them some new harmonics and giving yourself headroom as well to make things louder. So what I've got is the limiter version and the clipping version level match to one another, and we'll listen to what is good results versus pro level results. You'll hear the punch in the clipping poke out more. You can definitely hear it on those kick drums. I'll just loop a kick drum over. The same amount of limiting clipping, 7.5 dB of into the clip, 7.5 dB up into the limiter. Have a listen to these. It just snaps better the clip, and that's why it gets pro level and limiter gets good results. Now the next one is manual limiting, and this is something not really spoken about. I've spoken about it on the channel a couple of times, but it's basically going and getting those rogue peaks, the three or four rogue peaks, and ducking them to give you more headroom. So actually going in audio editor like this, finding the peak, oh, there's a peak over there, going to it, so that will take me to this peak. Oh, let's say uh, there's a peak there, and we zoom in all the way down to the sample level, Zoom, 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 zoom. Taking a while because there's so many samples and you just got three or four samples that are going over a peak. And instead of clipping or limiting, 
you just get your highlighter tool and attenuate them down three decibels. Now, the reason why this gets pro-leveled here is because often there's only three or four little stray peaks which are chewing up your headroom. And this has no sound. Manual limiting, except for those two or fractions of a millisecond that these edits are occurring, the sound stays exactly the same. So you're getting more headroom and a louder master without actually changing the fidelity of the audio. And to me, that's pro-level. That, that's a really good trick to have in your bag is to just be able to go through the odd peaks, quickly edit them down so you get more headroom and you can make a louder master because you're not changing the EQ, you're not introducing harmonics, you're not changing the dynamics of the overall mix. It's a really pro-level move. This next one, it kills me. It's cutting the lows for loudness and it gets the trash can because as a blanket statement, it will always be trash to me to cut the lows unless there's an actual problem down there. You're losing energy that is part of the track. The next one here is clipping into a limiter. Now, this is pro level, okay? You get the benefit of the clipping, you get a little bit of extra from the limiter, you just get a little bit extra so you don't hear that pumping, and that is pro level. So to show you this, we're gonna go from limiting to clipping to clipping into the limiter, and the last one, that clipping into the limiter, everything just opens up. Take a listen. The next one is parallel compression. This is gonna get you good results. Parallel compression will get you good results. I would almost put it at pro level only because if you set up a parallel compressor really well, you can actually bring out the verses, the bridges, those softer sections up in volume without affecting the main choruses in a really organic way, but it gets good results. And have a listen to this. This is using Dyn1 where I'm like bringing, I call it upward compression. I've had arguments with people about this, Let's say parallel compression so I keep people happy. This here, it's compressing the overall signal and just blending it in underneath. Have a listen to before and after and tell me what you think. The next one is actually a pretty interesting one, which I never heard of until I did a poll on my Instagram page, and that is stacking clippers. And I'm putting this in the trash can because I did some tests. I'm not just blindly putting it in the trash can. I did some tests because I had a theory. If you're hard clipping something and you go from one clipper to the next to the next, the result will be identical whether you have one or multiple of them because of the way it computes the maths. So what I did was, is I got two signal generators and I purposely chose two signal generators because I also wanted to measure into modulation distortion and with hard clipping that doesn't really happen which is a good thing or at least with these hard clippers it didn't so I've got one version here which is the clipper so this this is have a look at this so this is two clippers in a series yeah two clippers in a series one going at negative 15 the next one hitting negative 18 okay and then on this bottom channel here uh, I'm going to unmute it soon. I've just got one clipper at negative 18. What do you think happens when I unmute this one and invert the phase? It completely cancels out. So stacking clippers is throw it in the trash can, unnecessary. And then we've got stacking limiters. Guess what? Throw it in the trash can as well. I know some people swear by it. And here's the difference you're hearing when you're stacking limiters. If you're just using normal DSP linear limiting, um, it's going to do the same thing. There are exceptions where things like isotope ozone, they've got smart algorithms or, or machine learned algorithms in the background for the IRC module where it's constantly changing the variables based on the amount of distortions it's measuring. So it will make a difference in the sound of those. But stacking limiters isn't going to make such a great difference that you're going to magically get God tier loud masters. Um, I think it's just masking itself as bullshit it's just something even me i used to swear by stacking limiters stacking limiters did some tests couldn't really hear the results and then learning more about the way limiters work and the dsp behind them i, I i'm putting that in the trash can now grill me on that but whatever 
The next one is multiband and it is it can get you really good results and it almost makes that tier, but the reason why I'm putting it in the be careful tier is because you need to be so careful with multiband, you can destroy a mix with it. Now I've dialed this in the best I could and it's definitely giving me really good results, but I'm still gonna rank it as the be careful tier because if you overuse this, if you lose sight or lose perspective of your master, you're gonna destroy it with it. But listening before and after, I was very careful with the way I set up this multiband, and yes, I'm using Pro MB, and I threw shade at it when I said Dyne 1 is the only multiband liberty you need, but I've got it and I just set it up in it. Um, how do I put this? This sounds exceptional before and after. Have a listen. The next one is saturation. Um, now, you should be careful using saturation, but the effect of it is pretty pronounced. You can't really go down the hole of losing perspective with it because as soon as you turn it on and off, you can definitely hear what it's doing. It's getting you good results. And the reason is because saturation pairs, um, you know, a bit of distortion. It also helps with like, in parallel with some like compressive or dynamic characteristics and tonal characteristics it gets you good results. It's not going to get you pro level just using saturation. It's not going to get you god tier just using saturation. It's going to get you good results. Now, have a listen to this before and after. I've been plugging this plugin, um, Diamond Dynamic Saturated, just because it's it does what it says on the packet and it sounds fucking good every time. Have a listen to this before and after. The next one is stereo widening and I'm putting this or stereo enhancing and I'm going to put this on the be careful tier because too much stereo enhancement can make the center of the image collapse. I've spoken about this before. Um, it is a definitely a be careful tool. It'll definitely help a master along if it's too narrow. Um, but if it's not too narrow and you go down that rabbit hole of leaning on stereo widening to create a bigger image, it's going to simply be trash can. So be careful with stereo widening. Um, and the final one, now in the final one, which is much needed, and you're probably wondering, what is God tier? This might be a bit corny, but it's a good mix, okay? A good mix will always get you God tier results, definitely good mix, clipping, manual limiting, clipping into a limiter, are things that you want to be able to know about and manage in order to get pro-level loudness, and good results come from good tonal balance, using a limiter, Parallel compression can help that. Saturation can help that. If you're going to just rely on compression or multiband or stereo widening to get a loud master, you need to be careful. Um, there's only so much these tools can do to make something louder. And then cutting the lows or stacking limiters and lip clippers and limiters, in my opinion, a trash can techniques. So that's my tier list. Tell me, would you rank anything differently? Would you have included anything in this list, which I didn't? And would you just shuffle everything around and tell me that I absolutely have no clue what I'm talking about? Tell me in the comments, what would, where would you rate things differently than I have here?